Give us your feedback, and if you would like to, you can leave it anonymous, or there's a place to put in your name, and uh, we would love to uh, follow up if there are some suggestions, if you would like to make yourself available. If not, that is totally fine. So, uh, take just a few minutes, fill that survey out, and then we will get started with uh, one other thing. Um, after we do the presentations, we'll go over this again. We're going to bring folks up for the presentations of the check. We're going to do some team, your team photo right after you get that with the, the contributing sponsor who's presenting that. And so we'll uh, give you some more instructions on that as well when we get to the presentation time. Um, organizing team, anything that I've left out while we're doing the surveys? We're good. All right. I don't have any survey music queued up. So imagine the Jeopardy theme playing in your head as you fill up the survey. What? That was a joke? Tell us a joke. Tell you, no, that, you don't want to tell them jokes. I know you did. So we're going to go ahead and get started with our presentations. Uh, Unique Giving is up first, the team from Sproutlet, you guys are on deck. So if you would go ahead and make your way up to the front so you can get queued up and ready to go. We're going to turn things over to Paul. Hey guys, uh, my name is Paul Fleming and I'm with the team here, Nathaniel Watts, somewhere at the back here, and Patrick Lewis, uh, all of us from Dallas came out here. Uh, you know. We believe, like many of you, and I hope all of you, that the church is the hope of the world and that Christ uh, died to start the church and to uh, help the church solve problems. You know, here's the thing. That all throughout history, leaders, great leaders, have found new territory to go start new churches. Many of us have been a part of churches, and those started somewhere, and they all took a lot of funding to get started. They didn't just happen. Uh, what we found is that over time, starting churches has become a very expensive effort. But there are new leaders always on the horizon and always in queue. Even today, there's a growing movement of leaders who are finding new places, new growth pockets to start new churches, and they all need funding. I happen to know some experience. In 2005, I bought one-way tickets and flew my family all the way uh, with two kids to Portland, Oregon. We started in our home with eight people, launched uh, a service about 18 months later with 350, 350 people, and that church continued has continued to grow and take off. But what we found was that funding was the key to help us do what God had called us to do. I began to talk to a lot of church planners and found out that they need funding and they have a hard time casting vision and an easy way to get funding. And so what we've created is a tool called Unique Giving. What we believe is that if we can give leaders an opportunity to tangibly show 
the specific needs that they need, then it'll be easier for people to give to their project. It's hard for someone to say, I need $10,000 to go plant a church. It's easier to say, I need 40 chairs, and they cost $40 a piece, and I need you guys to pitch in to help us make that happen. So what we're creating is a crowdfunding opportunity called Unique Giving. And uh, the problem is that there are other crowdfunding tools out there, but none of them are specifically geared towards the church and uh, exclusively to the church. Our tool is, and our dream, is that we can exclusively gear towards churches. When church planners visit other churches and they tell people about their need, we want them to be able to send them straight to a website that is exclusively geared towards church planning so they can gain funds just through that tool. So let me show you how it works. Uh, this is UniqueGiving.com. What we've done is we've preloaded um, a bunch of sample, uh, not real churches, uh, all over the country, from Tulsa to Louisville and various other places. And you can click on these churches and kind of find out a little bit about the needs that they have. And uh, we've, we've created an opportunity for people to put a video and some other, uh, some other features that the church planner can help tell their story a little bit. And uh, so what I want to do is I want to show you how this would work from both the front end and the back end. Uh, if I'm a church planner, I would come and I would want to start a brand new funding campaign. And I would go here and I would begin filling out a form about my church, how much I want to raise. Um, and I would, here's the key, I would put specific tangible items on the screen. I need a crib and that costs $400. So it's one campaign with a lot of sub items. Most crowdfunding tools today are simple, small projects. That is just one item or one small project. This is a church planning as a long-term effort. It usually takes three to four years for a church to get going. And so we want to give opportunity for leaders to put tangible items in there and load, load that up. They would fill out their account and they would actually submit their campaign. And when they submit that campaign, they get a success notification. Our team would verify that they're an actual church. And uh, then their campaign would actually show up on the home page as a featured place for other people to go to. And they would have a direct link to send all their donors so they could share that socially. Now, if I am uh, a donor and I wanted to give to a campaign, I can search uh, on, on this for, you know, like Seattle or wherever I live and find if there's a church in my area that I can give to. Or maybe I got a direct link from a church planter that I want to go directly to. Uh, and I can search for new church startups and see where they are. But when I'm ready to give, I can click on any church and I can decide to contribute right now. And let's say I want to give $100. And I would give my $100, I would add my donation, and I would fill out all of the information that I need, including my credit card information. By the way, we're using the Stripe API. I pulled this in to help us out. Every church could have their own account and, uh, and be done. So um, the bottom line is someone goes in, they put their information in, they submit a gift, they're ready to go. It automatically texts the church planner that they got money, and they're good. That's our dream. It's called Unique Giving, and I'm uh, glad we can tell you about it. All right, thank you. Paul, quick clarification. Do you do any uh, do you do any vetting on the churches that can apply it? And so, um, like, can any church just throw their stuff up there and say, "Hey, I want money for my thing"? And then, how do you prevent over saturation? Yeah, that's a great question. We don't know if we've got that nut cracked yet, but what we want to do is make sure that people are approved, so that someone who's of a church that is not a real church and they're just making stuff up, we don't want that to like get in there and actually dilute the value of the tool. Uh, we may go to the step of making them give us a tax ID, but the problem is a lot of church plants get started raising funds before they actually get all their legal stuff together, because church planners uh, are not usually really great at the administrative side of things. So we want to help them out. Are, are church planners currently using tools like Indiegogo to any, to any success? They're not. And one of the things I get to talk with a lot of network leaders around the country, because that's my background, they're begging for a tool for their leaders. And they're wasting a lot of money because about 70% of churches that start up are failing and they're spending money on it. And there's no real good tool for that. The problem with Indiegogo or Kickstarter is that there are specific rules that actually prevent some nonprofits from being a part of the game. They're time-based, and so when the time runs out, if they don't hit their goal, they actually lose funds. So it's not really geared well towards a church plant, which is why this is something we're excited about. Is this new code? Uh, it is not new code. We've, we've done a little bit uh, on our own. We started it about a week and a half ago. We did a little bit this weekend, and we're still working on it. One last question. Yes, two quick questions. Uh, uh, would you take a portion of it to get funded? And then secondly, do you, 
actually allow specific physical items to be given, or is it always money for items? Yeah, that's a great question. The only thing we've considered from, the, from an online standpoint is a transactional amount, so a mon monetary thing, um, to answer that question. The other question is we're actually considering adding an option tag that says, would you like to add a dollar fifty to cover the cost of the transaction? And that way it gets passed on to the donor and not the person that actually needs the money, which is the church planner. Yeah. Thanks, guys. All right, and on deck is uh, Eupotia. Yeah, so when I say you're on deck, that need, means you need to be over here at the side getting ready to be hooked up. So, yeah, so please do. We'll get Sprout hooked up, and that'll give me a chance to uh, mention a couple things that I didn't mention. When you come up, uh, please indicate two things. Indicate two things. One, what category that you are, your challenge fits under, and number two, is it new code? So category and code, real quickly, uh, start out, lead with those things, and then uh, get into it. So Sprout Look is up. All right, hi everybody, my name is John Kreitz. Um, I'm a developer and a back-end guy, and I'm here with Ben Thomas, who's a designer. And we've had a lot of fun this, um, at the hackathon, and uh, we, um, we work, we've been working on this for a couple of weeks, and uh, then they've done the rest this weekend, so um, we're excited to share what we've got. So I have five kids, and my partner, Ben, has two, and we're, so we're fathers who are very passionate about tech stuff for our kids. Um, so as our kids have gotten older, my oldest son's nine and Ben's daughter is six, um, they're wanting to participate more and more in the online world. And uh, as parents, we don't want to just throw them out there uh, to be exposed to the inappropriate content that exists. Uh, so instead, we want to protect their eyes and minds um, as they're developing and learning how to navigate the online waters. So um, we were excited to see the uh, spiritual formation and children category. Uh, that's a category we're going for. And uh, because protecting our kids as they're young and developing, we feel like is a huge part of their spiritual formation. Uh, so we've looked around quite a bit, and uh, while there are some great apps for kids, there's nothing that has really solved the problem of online interaction in a safe way for kids. Um, so we decided to build Sproutlook. Um, email has never been so fun, is our tagline. Uh, so Sproutlook is a safe and easy way for your kids to interact online. Um, it's simple and fun. Uh, scroll down here. We've, uh, we've taken email and we've removed all the things that kids don't need. And we're trying to make the interaction super simple for the kids. Uh, we've got a drawing tool for younger kids uh, so they can simply send a picture to grandma without having to type anything. Um, they can get a reply from grandma without having her install a new app or sign up for a new service because this is just simply email. Um, we've got security, uh, some security features here. And uh, what we've done is we've built some moderation tools for, uh, for the parents that give them control. Uh, so all incoming and outgoing emails will go to the parents first, and then they can decide whether or not their kids see it. Uh, so you can simply swipe to the right to approve, uh, swipe to the left to reject the message, or you can tap the message and get more options like um, permanently blocking or approving um, the contact. So. Uh, We've, uh, we've, we've made a lot of progress in the last couple of days, uh, front end and back end, and uh, we've got a functioning app, and yesterday we actually sent our first email and received our first email with Sproutlook, so that was really cool. Um, so let's jump into a live demo here. So this is the interface. Uh, the message view, you can see a list of your emails. Um, you know, we've, we've tried to build a, a really intuitive and, and interactive um, interface here. Um, we actually had our kids test this, and the things that worked, we kept. The things we, we, that didn't work, we just ditched them. Um, you know, we've got attachments that are really easy to find. You can move things from your inbox with a simple click um, and reply to a message. And uh, the message composer is just as easy. We can um, send, a, send a message to grandma, 
And uh, type in a subject. And we've got some formatting tools, which displays kind of off because it's so small, but um, um, we've got some display tools for some text formatting. You can do pictures and uh, attach audio recordings and other attachments. And we think the, the pictures and audio is going to be a really big hit for the kids uh, because someone who can't, um, who can't type yet, they can draw a picture or they can make an audio recording and just send it to grandma. Um, so an email is just the beginning. Uh, we, with, with these parental moderation tools, um, we can really allow parents to moderate a lot of things, like browsing the web, videos, games, blogs, uh, really anything that can be sent or received or viewed online. And so the next phase of this, we want to build a, build a web browser. And so uh, parents can moderate how their kids browse. And using the mobile tool for the parents, they can approve those things in a very quick and easy way. Um, so we're planning on starting a private beta in a couple of weeks, and then we're going to do a, a public beta at the beginning of next month. Um, and we're just excited to see, um, to get these tools in parents' hands, and uh, you know, see how Scrabble can can help kids to navigate the world, you know, the online world um, as they're growing. So that's it. Thanks. How do you manage conflict between the, the parent and the child? So if the child believes that their content is legit and the parent rejects it, and there's, there's, there's trouble around that. Yeah, totally. And you know, that's, that's something we'll need to figure out. Um, you know, there are, we've talked about sending messages to alert the child and the, you know, of what's happening, you know, like if somebody gets rejected or something like that. But at the end of the day, I mean, it's a parent-child relationship. So, you know, Johnny can go talk to his mom and say, Mom, why can't I get an email from Billy? It's like, well, he called you a poopy head, so I'm sorry. <laughs> so, yeah. Can you send me an email right now, like a voice email? Uh, the, the voice is not hooked up. I can send you um, a text email. Yeah, send me an email. All right, cool. Send me a call. Send me a yeah, let me get. Um, this is a this is our prototype site, but let me uh, let me actually pull out the uh, the local site. Fifty five seconds. Yeah. If you um, have a question, you can do it offline. Yeah, I'll do it offline. Okay. Because okay. I'm I need to start the server back up. Okay. So yeah, right. I can totally show you how that works. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Anything please? else? All right, thanks a lot. All right, Utopia. And uh, coming up on deck is I'll Join You. So I'll join you, team, if you guys would come on up and uh, begin the process of getting staged. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, what I'm presenting today is Upotia.com. Upotia is a 3D network for Christians, churches, and church associations. First of all, my team, right now we have uh, more than 20 people working on this project right now. They're all my service uh, employees. It's a complete team. Myself, I have an MBA degree from University at Buffalo and a master's degree in computer science and engineering. My CTO is a PhD uh, and uh, we are blessed with an advisor from Google. Very, we are very lucky. Also, at this point, we are developing a network of champions around the world to support the uh, pushing the system to churches. So, in this network, uh, we have Christians, churches, and church associations. And in the near future, we are going to introduce uh, Christian business to promote uh, promote them. So, in this in this graph, you see at the very top. It's an association. It can be a formal association like a presbytery, or it can, it can be a loosely organized group of locally regional uh, organization. Underneath the wings of the association, there are many churches. 
uh, they form a network. And at the bottom here, that's the uh, congregants of each churches. So in this network, it's not only from people to people like any other social network. But also, it's from organization to organization. It's both horizontal and vertical. It's from people to people, from organization to organization, and from people to organization, and from organization to organization. Once we have everybody connected in the network, what we can do with it? It's up to your imagination. We have already built a lot of tools in the, in the system. Imagine if you go, go to Facebook, you are connected on Facebook. So you are connected, then what? Right? This is a model of uh, uh, animation, how information flows in the network. Horizontally, vertically, distributes, populates down, disseminates, and you see over here, they receive a piece of information, but they decide not to participate. So information stops there. Which means each entity inside this network, they have total control of themselves. How information flows, what to come in, what to come out, uh, go out. They have total control of that. So anyway, uh, that's the, the network that we have built. Now let me show you the uh, the demo of it. Some of those features is already in the system, is already released and and it's in the network uh, and it's in the field. See, that's what I did whenever I need help. There you go. <laughs> Kiss God. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to go quickly some of the existing features. And that's uh, for brothers and sisters, that's just like any other network. In this network, you can, uh, you can tag them in different ways. And you can make any particular one, make it private. If you make it private, nobody else will even see that you have a category of friends there. And then if you leave your church with the questions in your mind that you didn't want to identify who asked that, you can send your pastor an anonymous message. And your pastor can reply to you, but never know who asked that. Uh, ministries and groups, you can join different ministries and groups and you can participate in discussion, organize events, uh, suggest events to your church. So if you have some idea, you can ask your church, can we work on this? So it's not only from top to bottom, but also you have your idea uh, heard by your church. Okay, the one that we want to see is sermons. That's a feature that a group of pastors or anybody, you can write your sermon before Sunday, upload that, and share that with all the pastors. If they want, they can help you to, uh, to make it more better. And on Sunday, you record your service, you upload that. After Sunday, all the Christians, they can, they can log on and uh, view your, uh, uh, your sermons. Okay. Thank you. Do you have active users on the system now? Yes. We have right now we have churches from the United States, from Canada, India, uh, China, and the Philippines. What are the most popular features of those markets? Uh 
sermons earlier. Actually, you don't want to hear that. <laughs> the most prominent feature here is not the most prominent that they like. So we can discuss that later. Yeah, it's an interesting. What was that this weekend? Say again. What was that this weekend? What was the news about this? Okay, the uh, the sermons, the the group sermons here. That's at this, and my engineers they were working on it until hours ago. I'm curious about the anonymous emails to the pastors. You know, is that only from people in their congregation, and how do they feel about it? Yes, the we. That's another thing that we add. If you. We want as many people to join, as many churches to join as possible. But everybody, if you are alone, if you if you don't belong to any church, you can take advantage of 90% of the features. If you want to take advantage of all of them, you have to ask the other party to join. It's the same for the anonymous message. You have to have yourself and your church to be there. Now, there is a, a, there is a, a, a rule here. If you send out a message to your pastor and you will you will uh, tag as a spam twice, you will be barred from the network forever. Okay. Well, great. All right. Thank you. All right. I'll join you plus Bible. You're next, so if you would please come up and be ready, and then after that is track the master. Uh, my name is Shemichael Holman. Hello, everyone. On behalf of my teammates, Jonathan uh, and Justin, who's not here, we just, again, want to say thanks for the opportunity to be here before you. Uh, we have new code started on this project uh, this weekend, uh, and it falls under the Stronger, Healthier Churches category. The name of the app is I'll Join You. I'll join you. I think those are three words that every pastor would love to hear from his members. And I think deep down that's three words that every member would love to say to their pastor because everyone wants to be connected to a, a, a purpose and a vision. But we believe that that process is broken. The process by which that happens is broken. It's broken largely because of what we think is a top-down process um, whereby pastors and leaders create opportunities that don't necessarily take into account the skills and passions and interests of the members. And so what we have created here with um, I'll Join You is a meeting space, an online meeting space where the passions of the people, the interests of the people, the strengths uh, of the people uh, meet and match the desire of the church to advance the gospel. Uh, two things happen in this, in this online meeting space. Number one, members are able to sign up and create profiles to talk about those passions and skills and interests. Uh, once that's created, they're able to then look for opportunities within the church that match some of the passions that they have. They're also able to connect with other members um, who uh, share the same skills and passions. Uh, the other thing that happens is churches are now able to search for specific talents and skills within the church. Uh, and, and this helps by perhaps uh, getting them to alter the way they do missions or perhaps creating an entirely new mission opportunity. So we're really excited about it. We think it would have tremendous impact in how a church engages its members to do things. Um, and so we'll give you a quick demo here. Um, the first page that you, that you see, our home page, is, is, is a call to action. There's a button that says take action, and from there you are signing up. We have a number of ways you can sign up by also using social uh, media plugins. And once you sign up, you have the opportunity of, of, of signing up as an organization or as a member. Uh, we'll take you through the member process first. Uh, so from this member profile, you're able to add an avatar, uh, put your name, which is automatically populated from uh, from Twitter uh, or whatever plugin you, you decide to use. You have to put in a brief biography. And then at the bottom here, we have a unique tagging system where, whereby you go and uh, put in the things that you are passionate about. Uh, this is kind of a, a, a smart technology in that as people uh, enter different tags, the system will remember it. Um, and so this kind of prevents you know 50 people from typing in something similar. So as you begin to type, it will automatically bring up what the other people have typed in. And so once you have your skills and passive ability in, 
you press enter, and then you're immediately brought up to different organizations. This would, this, this would help, you know, if you're not a member of a church and you're looking to join a church to say, hey, I've got these skills, I've got these passions, uh, this would also help you find uh, different churches that you might want to be a part of. Um, so from here, uh, this is a sample page of how a church might look, and these different tags are kind of the dominant strengths that show uh, with that church, as well as people who are associated with these various tags. The second thing that we want to show you, oh, and you can actually join that community and once you, once you join that community or join that church, any uh, any opportunity that comes up that involves the tags that you put that you put out there, you'll immediately be made aware via an email that hey, this church church just created this opportunity. It matches with things that you said you like. It's an opportunity for you. Uh, so we want to show you the other side of that and how churches would be able to use the system. So again, it's the same sign up process, uh, same sign in process as Jonathan. Is that done there? All right, so here is the organization page for the church. And again, the church now has the ability, they have a profile. This is a profile that would be seen by anyone. And say the church now wants to create an opportunity based off a certain skill set. They will, from this, from this ad cloud, pull in various skill sets that they're looking for. Uh, they'll hit submit, and immediately they will get a list of people who are compatible with those skill sets. Um, they're able to then create a project, put some details in about the project, hit add project, and the details of that project goes to everyone who matches that skill set. That is, I'll join you. Any questions? Back to the I'll join you so I can Questions, Jim? Any questions? All new code this weekend. All new code this weekend. That's great. Hey, is it, is, um, are churches able to white label this to embed it into their own website instead of asking uh, their congregants to go to uh, an outside website? We had not explored that, but I really like that, and I think that's something that. We have briefly discussed about putting an API in the back end so that we can hook it to mobile devices, but as well allow churches to be able to build in something into their churches. So, yeah. Any other questions? I'm just curious if you thought about, is there a church size that would, I mean, do you have to have 100 people or, to make a search meaningful? Or? I don't think so. You know, I mean, I've been involved with churches, you know, Two or three hundred, and I've been involved with churches that have 15, 20,000. Um, and you know, in every scenario, you've got situations where people walk in, they join the church, and they don't know how to get assimilated. You know, they sit in the back row and they go out the back door. And we think this, if they used it, would be an awesome way to number one, connect with other like minded people, but number two, also give the church a way to engage those people. We also discussed the idea of allowing members to eventually build their own groups so that you have a Bible study, you can even evaluate the skills of your Bible studies, so you can then gear your projects as a group based on the skills that are within your group. One more question? Yes. Have you considered any uh, security problems with people identifying skills that they don't really have? Do you have any metrics to give confidence to one person's skill set or something else? A lot of that's going to depend on the organization, the walkthrough. We didn't build it in yet, but basically when you get to that page of adding the project, you'll be able to deselect people and say, no, I know what this guy can do. He's not able to do this. And then basically not email them and contact them. And so it will be an organization, organizer's job to kind of do that filtering initially. There might be cool to like add in like the, a link to their LinkedIn profile or whatever just to get you know, it. Thank you. All right, Plus Bible is up and Track the Master, you guys are on deck. Hi guys, um, so my name's Chris, this is also Chris, and this is Femi, and we, uh, plus Zach who's missing, is the, are the Plus Bible team. Plus Bible is an online collaborative Bible re reading experience. 
Um, we think it sort of bridges both the spiritual formation and father ministries categories, but I mean, really, we just think that a better Bible reading experience is the foundation of both personal and uh, sort of church relationships. And it's about 75% new code. Um, right, so we really think that the Bible is important to spiritual formation, and we see a lot of different cases in which it would be better to have a uh, experience that can be distributed online. So, for example, Zach, one of our teammates, has a brother across on the East Coast who he likes to um, read the Bible with. So maybe he'll like call him up on the phone or you know email him back and forth notes. Um, but we thought that we could do this in a better way by just having you know the Bible online uh, and he can coordinate his notes. Well, what about uh, small group communities or fellowship communities? Um, I have one who, uh, after disbanding over the summer, um, you know, they were missing their Bible study experience, so they started up a Google Doc and they started writing, you know, Romans 9, uh, here's, here's Dan's thoughts on this and here's Bob's thoughts on this, and it just got very messy very quickly. So, uh, again, we thought we could make a more pleasant, interactive experience for that. Um, or what if you're trying to outreach to a non-believer or a new Christian who needs a bit of help uh, and coordination leading them along with, you know, what does this confusing passage mean? Uh, and you're not always able to meet up with them in person. Then, again, we think that Plus Bible would be beneficial for the situation. So now Chris will take you through a quick demo of the application. All right, so uh, Chris, like uh, Chris said, um, so here's uh, the landing page of Plus Bible. It's really clean. Uh, it will do exactly what you think it will do. Uh, we just think, you know, some of the other Bible uh, websites kind of have a lot of clutter, a lot of ads. Uh, we kind of went with uh, we kind of went with something uh, cleaner. So uh, let me hide that real quick. So this is John chapter three. It, you know, it's it's very clean format. Uh, you can do a keyword search. So, um, so this is just kind of what you would get from Bible Gateway. But I think the experience really comes, uh, if I pop back out real quick, to uh, if I connect this now with my Facebook. So immediately you see there's uh, three different, or two different notebooks that I get by default. One is shared among my Facebook friends. The other one is private. So if I select the Facebook one, uh, we're going to see that we get some highlights on some verses and it's kind of cut off on the side but you can see different comments from some of the people on my network uh, show up automatically you don't have to add them in this website you don't have to manage two different groups you just pulls whatever is from Facebook so through all the verses you can see some light highlighting this is where there's content underneath um, and we just think it's, it's just very nice to have something like this and you can have replies to that and just kind of have a whole conversation uh, on the spot. And as we said, you have different notebooks. I can switch to my private one. Um, and you see it just says, this is my private sharing, uh, but it's a, it's a completely different set and I can create any new number of notebooks. Now this is one of the features that we really think it's really useful because I can create a notebook and then share that with my Bible study and anybody who has this kind of a sandbox uh, you know, that is, is exclusive to that team. And so we think you know, it's, it's more useful than just kind of this big network that Facebook offers or just having private, you have a nice in-between that is specific to your community. One more minute. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's pretty simple. Just to show you a little bit of the UI too as well. You just go in, you add another note, um, and say, um, let's see. It's added immediately and uh, shows up there. So that's that's the idea. And I think one of the thoughts is there is used for can be used for a lot of things. Like we said, it's it's a kind of easy way to kind of come in and have this idea of sharing Bible passages with, with the real focus on the text, not just focus on everything that's going on or social media, but a real strong focus on the text and being able to really take that in and to um, find things that your friends have have also shared or be able to talk about. Um, and it can be used in a lot of ways, like um, like. Uh, Chris, Chris Lee mentioned at the start, it, it very much be used for pastors to be able to engage with the congregation.
organizations or be able to um, um, give, give advice or things. So if somebody, if they're an important leader, they can um, have their own private, uh, you know, their private, uh, private notebook that they can share with like their congregation or like the world and then people can get their thoughts and their notes and apply to them. So. Right. Thank you. Is it uh, what's, what's success for the idea? Um, do you want to build a business out of it? Do you just want to get more people to read the Bible? How do you guys want to do it? I think it was, it was a combination of things. Chris Lee, when he first pitched the idea, was about like just getting more insight uh, you know, into the Bible. Sorry. Uh, getting more insight into the Bible. Uh, when I came in, I kind of had, if you guys are familiar with Rap Genius, uh, we kind of had that idea too, where it was just you know a community sharing. Uh, and so we kind of combine it together. I think it's both, you know, for building communities and for getting, you know, extra, like knowledge and insight on the passage. I don't think we're particularly interested in building business. We just like it to be, you know, a tool that people can use. Good. I really like the clean look. Uh, but also want to ask, was there nothing else, you know, out there already that you like? So put it differently. What are you adding to 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 reading the Bible online? Uh, we search for a couple of things. Uh, some of them, some of the solutions, you kind of have to manage the community on the website, uh, which we felt like was just an extra layer uh, that you now have two different places. Uh, I know the standard Bible app and a lot of the iPhones and Androids tried doing some of the commenting, but it never took off. Uh, I think because it was a feature added later, we think that if you kind of come out where your center, center focus is sharing, I think you would have a lot more success in yeah. Okay, yeah. I like it. I love, um, you know, I love that you're bringing social into Bible reading. I mean, I, I totally see myself like, enjoying this, right, as a pastor. My question is, when I connect in through Facebook, right, um, am I going to be sharing with all my Facebook friends, or can I create, like, a small little group out of my Facebook friends? that it's going to give access to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so uh, if, if we went back, the Facebook notebook yeah. gets shared with everybody who is your friend. In Facebook. In Facebook. Yeah. But we're not like pushing it over there, right? If they come here, they would be able to see your, your, your notes. Yeah. Um, but then you can always create a new notebook that you share more privately. Gotcha, gotcha. So I guess we don't really have like hierarchy settings yet. Yeah. Um, okay, done. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> All right, Tractor Master is up and Scriptive. You guys are on deck, so Scriptive team, come on up and begin to get plugged in. And we will turn it over to Tractor Master, who's doing our presentation. Hey guys, uh, I'm John, I'm the designer. that to anybody else? This one? Yeah, it's just that. Yeah. Cool. Perfect. Cool. So um, our idea kind of centered around uh, our, we all go to reality and uh, we kind of centered on the idea of if you most people have gone to a church and if it's any larger than extremely small you can run into the issue of um, just going and not actually making any sort of connection with anybody. Um, so we centered around wanting to make something that was uh, genuinely useful for uh, connecting people and sort of encouraging organic relationship. Um, so we kind of came with that, this idea of an events listing thing. Um, we put our church logo in there and stuff, but this isn't designed to be um, a product per se could integrate into any any church's uh, website or at all. So um, our idea was to keep all the tech as out of the way as possible. Like nobody needs another network to check, another inbox to check, a new technology. Um, so that guided a lot of how we designed and how we executed this thing. So. This is the main page, which would be um, the list of everything that's just kind of going on. Um, our primary filters were um, time, category, and neighborhood. The category also being interests. So um, the idea would be that this could just be something that's highlighted, maybe in the announcements, uh, the beginning of a service, or 
just kind of ongoing mention for people to A, come and post events, and B, come and look to meet up with people. So you could say, um, oh, I'm interested in food, and so um, it filters all these in real time, and you can look through the listings, and so jump into here, and um, they're tagged by both interest and neighborhood. And so we kind of have some, some dummy listings in here, and some photos and whatnot. So, you could, um, <clears throat> down here we, we came up with a really low friction flow just to get uh, people signed up for stuff. So uh, you say I want to join this, you put in um, you know, your name and your email and your phone number and whatever and then you get subscribed to it. <clears throat> and then there'd be a, an admin view that the event creator could just see the list of people and have an easy tool to contact them all via text or email and nothing real heavy there, so as to keep the burden off uh, the person creating the event. So we have that. Um, you could filter by neighborhood, which is obviously um, definitely important here in the city because community tends to happen very neighborhood-centric, so we focused on that. And then as well as that, um, we did make it fully responsive so that um, mobile is obviously important. It's something that people could easily do on their phones you know, during or after church. So uh, we kept it lightweight, and uh, the filters still all happen in, um, in real time, and you get your list of events down here. You can click into them, the, the flows are responsive, the subscriptions are responsive. Um, so you can accomplish all that. So only thing I think I haven't shown is this posting, so uh, I'll just walk you through creating an event. You could say, let's do dinner, let's do it, that's fine. How about my house? Pick a neighborhood. Oops. Oh, my neighborhood. Pick a neighborhood. One minute. Uh, description, let's do dinner. Category. I guess dinner is lunch now. <laughs> you create it. And uh, it's joined our list down here. People can see it and join it as well. So that's everything. Right. Uh, all new code, all new design. We started yesterday. And I guess we're in the category of strengthening industries as well as new code. Any other questions? Anything else, business? Thank you very much. All right, scriptive, and then exalt. The exalt team is on deck, so you guys come on up and get ready to get plugged in as we turn things on to scriptive. of Christians actually are not in the Bible often. This is a, actually a pretty alarming statistic, and it comes from um, the Barna Research Institute actually here in California. And the reason why most people, and that's actually 1.8 billion Christians, by the way, around the world, and the reason why most people are not often in the Bible is because that they struggle to actually make sense of biblical teaching in light of their daily circumstances. So it's an application issue. It's very difficult for a lot of new Christians especially to find a verse in the Bible and relate it to their daily life. And so needless to say, you know, there are a lot of disconnected people out there from the Word of God, from God himself. And uh, disconnected Christians, of course, are far less likely to pray, to serve, share their faith, and be generous with their resources and obviously handle life circumstances with a godly perspective. And to solve this problem, We've actually built a technology called Scriptive that connects Scripture with your daily life. It recommends Scripture according to, you, to your needs, intuitively pinpointing your circumstances and your emotions, then recommending Scripture that's very powerful and personal. This technology was actually released a couple of uh, months ago, um, but we used actually this, uh, this weekend to take the Minimal Viable product and enhance it 
basically connecting this technology to the world via social network uh, sharing and then using uh, a couple tools that we've developed this weekend to actually help to interact with these verses to dive deeper. I'm going to kind of do a little bit of a showcase right now. So imagine someone, uh, let's call her Susan, she's having a difficult day, she goes descriptive, um, she's, uh, you know, she fills out this little slider uh, answering the question, how are you, and puts in something like uh, that she just got in a car wreck. And so filtering, so filtering between uh, hundreds of emotion word, uh, English words that describe an emotion, it actually uh, recommends what you might be feeling in case you're not really, I mean, because a lot of people don't really know what they're feeling at any given time sometimes. Uh, so it kind of gives you some options and it's ranked according to relevance, of course. So you find the, uh, uh, Susan fine tunes her, uh, her emotions. She's feeling anxious, a little overwhelmed because uh, of car insurance. I, I mean, this is just, you know, some of the random searches that we've actually gotten in the past, that just some real life searches. Uh, she's worried, maybe stressed uh, about what's gonna, you know, happen after her car wreck. And based on these, uh, the, her array of emotions and the context of her circumstances, she gets scripture that's personally powerfully tailored to her needs. So we can kind of choose one, like be anxious for nothing, for everything, by, you know, but in everything by prayer and supplication. She can share it to uh, Facebook, which these work now. Uh, Explore, which we've built a uh, memorization tool. And this is, this is a fun one right here. Uh, actually, you can uh, test your memory to hide the word in your heart so that you can engage with the Bible a lot more. So as you slide this, this uh, slider, it hides the words to test your relevant, to test your memory. If you get tripped up on something. So we've got a bunch of other options that we can do, uh, a couple other ideas that we can kind of engage, the, uh, use this technology and other cert Bible applications out there, licensing an API, all these great ideas. The next stage that we're going to, we will really want to do is to take this mobile. Right now it's a web app, uh, and we, that's our next stage, is to make this a mobile app. And um, real quick, our, our team, myself, Charles uh, Roach, uh, Spencer Norman is one of our front-end developers, Frank Brietta is back-end, and we've got two awesome people to join our uh, crew this weekend. Uh, Colin and uh, Christina from uh, from Germany, so that's pretty pretty awesome. Uh, and we just we're passionate about getting scripture in the hands of people who don't necessarily know where to find scripture, so that they will actually fall in love uh, with the Bible again. Uh, so thank you so much. I know so the verses on the top were recommended by seven people, three people, and seven people. So, yes. do the larger numbers always come to the top, or? They do. And it learns. And, and it learns. Yes. The more people use it, the more people, the, the more the system actually learns what people go through to connect those type of emotional rays to the circumstances. It, it really it learns in a couple different ways. So when somebody searches, we actually learn from users searching. So if a user describes themselves as doing a 20 out of a 0 to 100, that's the first step. And then they go and they type some text, and then they tell us some emotions. And so what we can do with that information is we can associate certain emotions with certain phrases. So we can then know that car wreck is generally or at least in this instance, the 20, and it's also associated with anxiousness, with embarrassment, with frustration, et cetera. So we learn from the users who are searching, and then they also get results, and they're allowed to thumbs up or recommend verses like that. And that tells us which verses are relevant to those uh, factors. Um, the other side is that we have users who are able to actually recommend verses without using the search technology. So if you were a pastor, or if you were a uh, youth leader or whatever, and you wanted to actually recommend scripture, we have a second kind of back end to this where you can go and just type in, we give you an emotion word, and you tell us what scripture is associated with it. Do you guys have any plans to, say, track mood over time? Yeah. Yes, actually, yes. So, that, we that question. do that, we just don't have a dashboard for it yet. 
Take the words out. What was built over this weekend? The memorization tool was enhanced the verse uh, landing page. We had we had some uh, code that would share scripture, the verses, and the results like to social networking, but when that, that link back happened from social networking, those landing pages were, were not developed almost at all. And so we've developed those, plus we've developed a way that uh, you can see, or the user can see uh, the trends of emotions that this, uh, this verse has actually been helping people out with. So, so a, lot of, a lot of that kind of engagement part of taking our technology and putting it into the hands of people who have actually use it. What are the biggest challenges to see on mobile as you move there? Uh, mainly design. I'd say it's just the, I mean, the, from a graphic design standpoint, it's, it's we've, we haven't really started out with a, with a very consistent design and to get it to be a very simple, quick user interface, um, it is definitely the challenge. Great. Thank you very much. While Exalt's getting hooked up, uh, you have 60 seconds to stand straight up. Don't go anywhere. Stand straight up, stretch, move around, move your arms and legs. Don't run off, though. Well, I am not a licensed instructor. If I tell you how to stretch, you are likely to get injured. And so I will refrain from that, but give you a chance to get out of your chair for just a minute while we get them all plugged in. Uh, next up is Abide. So the Abide team, you actually can go somewhere. You can come up to the front and be ready to get hooked up after Exalt is, uh, does their presentation. What was that? How many more? All right, time's up. Sit down. Here we go. Find Exalt. More. Five more before us. Everybody ready? Five more before us. Okay. I, uh, we're, we're Exalts, and uh, the project we're going to talk about is called Stars and Stones. And uh, our tagline is Inspiring Hope and Thankfulness in Christ for Mobile Generation. So real quick, I just want to touch on the biblical concept behind this. And we really feel like as we look at technology, it is important to keep a biblical mindset. And so throughout the scripture, it's noted that God uses physical things to remind us of spiritual truths. So things like baptism and communion. Old Testament festivals, monuments, like actual physical stones, uh, to remind people of the great things that God did in their lives. Um, so why does God do this? Well, it's because we often forget. And uh, a great example is the children of Israel. God delivers them, and a couple days later, they're off like sacrificing to a golden cow. Um, so this is even a bigger problem in today because we have so many distractions with all this media and all these things. And, but yet images, like, like these monuments or these festivals or these things are amazing reminders, especially when they're associated with an actual event that's, that's an emotional and mental experience. So what we're doing is, is putting a kind of a modern twist on that, on that biblical concept. So the problem is it turns out that carrying around a backpack full of memorial rocks from God is not really <laughs> practical, right? Unless you want to get Paul. Um, and so the solution is, is we can have actual virtual, what we call stars and stones that represent God moments in your past, which are the stones, and God promises in your future, which are the stars, which actually reference to Abraham and, and what God showed him. Um, and see, these virtual stars and stones would each have some type of media, uh, a picture or a piece of audio or a video that when you watch it, it just connects and associates that mental and emotional experience that you had before, bringing you back to the things that God did for you. So real quick, we're gonna show uh, the app. Um, it's a mobile app, Android app. Uh, we actually, this is all new code. We just started coding yesterday morning. Uh, most of us actually don't even have that much Android experience. <coughs> We've done some Java stuff. So here's just a few stars and stones. Um, you know, salvation testimony. You know, a star, I, you know, I believe God is a provider, so I'm looking for a new job. Um, and so Sean right now is going to make a new one. We kind of feel like this one is a, is a very kind of personal, you know, thing for this weekend. And so we're going to have the, uh, the actual hackathon stone, which is kind of a memorial of all the the great, wonderful things and experiences that we had talking with all of you on, hanging out with dirt, uh, nerds that, that really love Jesus. And so, uh, so yeah, and then you can also take an image. We added some, uh, some functionality to do that. So Sean will go into that here in a second. Uh, with these images and how you would actually view them, we didn't really get into that too much other than a list view right now, but in, in the future we're thinking you could actually have uh, a thing set up so that you would have automated you know, kind of random once a day reminders of, of stones that God has done in your past, kind of bringing you back in your day-to-day day -day distractions. Uh, everybody say cheese. 
Jeez. Fortunate it's an emulator, so, so it can be an actual <laughs> animation. Um, you know, some other things that we were talking about too is, you know, just a, a chronological view. You could just sit down and watch these images and just be reminded of your life journey with God, you know, in, 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 a, in a real way. Um, so this is this, this, uh, this, this stone for this uh, particular event. So we also came up with a couple different examples of stars and stones. Um, stones, we thought there could be some general ones that apply to all believers, like Jesus' sacrifice or adoption as kids that would just be good, that you could download as kind of defaults. Uh, some template ones that are kind of true for all believers, but may have like a personal experience, like salvation. Uh, we also talked about some different categories. Funny ones like men and moments where God is provided, or cloud nine where we experience the love of God, or party time, uh, somebody, somebody becomes a believer. Uh, stars are more about uh, future promises, so things like every, every believer has the promise of heaven. Uh, there can be prayerful stars, things that you're believing God for. And then when those things are actually uh, come to pass, then you can actually convert them into stones as memorials. And you kind of have that, that history, right? Um, so, so, and then other things like calls or personal promises where you can continue to write down the things that God has been speaking and putting on your heart as he's moving you in a direction in your life. So here's a couple quick use cases that I'll just run through. One is like a daily reminder where it's almost like a text message from God just reminding you, here's this, this stone. Uh, and, and it just kind of brings you back during the business of your day. Uh, reflection through trials, this was huge. Uh, th there was one time where I was going through some hard stuff and I brought out some letters of, that people had written from a long time ago and just remembered the goodness of God and what he was doing in my life at that time and I went from feeling really down to feeling really good. So this is a great use of that. Uh, building community, you can actually have stones and stars that are shared amongst people, friends, churches, families. Um, so building family memorials is great. 10 seconds? Yeah. <laughs> Shoot. Um, so yeah, we're basically trying to redeem technology, um, bring this powerful reminder, leveraging biblical principles to exalt Christ. Last slide. So this is our first stone. Uh, this is Sean took this this morning. Uh, only person who pulled an all-nighter for Jesus. <laughs> uh, any questions? <laughs> share the gift of prayer. Today's world crowds out the space for prayer. Back in Acts 2, the disciples were together. They were physically together, present, praying, fasting together. The Holy Spirit was there. It was communal. Two or three were gathered. The power of the Spirit was present and people's lives were transformed. Today, people are physically distant. They're distracted. They feel empty. Uh, even though they're crowded around with people, they're not able to engage in the depth of communal prayer the way that we once were. I think the question is, what is the space today where we can pray together with an invisible God amidst all of this distraction? The answer is to create a prayer mode on your phone for engaging with your friends and with, uh, with fellow believers. There are over a billion phones out there that can be virtual ears and virtual mouths to capture and express the Holy Spirit. There are 200 million Christians in the US, there are two billion believers worldwide in this disparate community that we can connect together in the actual act of prayer. What we want to do is insert the tradition of spoken prayer into this world that is hustling and bustling with modern life and create a, a space for us to do a virtual laying on of hands that fits inside of the lifestyle, the busyness that we have. So what does that look like? You're going to be able to create a gift of prayer. It's a very simple, clean interface and layout. I'm going to give you an audio demo here in just a minute. When you come into the app, what you see is the act of prayer that you need to do. The person praying and the person you're praying for. You select who you're going to pray for. 
You press and hold and you pray, and it sends. It's that simple with connecting to your contacts. You don't have to worry about looking up anybody's address, anything else. You don't have to worry about what platform they're on, whether or not they use Abide, have ever heard of Abide. We're going to distribute it out to them through email, so it's an omnichannel solution. You can re you receive a prayer. If you're not um, on Abide, you'll receive the prayer through email. Um, you get a nice email saying that a, a prayer has been shared with you, and you'll click on the audio file to open it up. And what you see is the call to action to listen to the prayer and to pray alongside of the person who prayed for you. So you'll get to see the person who prayed for you inside of there and uh, experience the prayer together. You press and hold and the prayer plays. It's that simple. What's been powerful is that early users love it. We sent out a bunch of prayers this weekend to friends, uh, to a whole bunch of people, atheists, non-believers, and believers, people I barely know. I got this uh, email back from one of the people I sent it out to. Neil, your prayer is the best piece of digital content I've ever received, and the kindest gesture online or offline in a long time. You made my week. I think what we found is that people want to bless other people with prayer, and they don't know how to do it, they don't have a channel for it. This is a new type of digital content. Imagine all those mothers out there who want to reach out and pray for those kids. That pastor who has all these congregants who are in hospitals who are hurting, he can't go out and meet with them every week. How can he bless them with prayer? Boom, I just pray for you and I send in release. I pray and I send in release. And it's a way to engage this community that is that is disparate, that's distracted uh, in the actual work of prayer. And what we're trying to center around is the app is the work of prayer. It's not cheap. It causes you to do it. And the one thing that would cause this to fail is that people are too lazy to pray. And if you're too lazy to pray and we can help fight that, that's a good challenge to fight. So we have already... Um, we have already prayed over all of the judges, and we have sent you prayers. So you can, uh, in your email inbox is a prayer for you. Uh, in terms of a buy right now, I'll open it up, and I'm going to record a prayer for one of our mentors uh, who blessed us yesterday, and just thank him and bless him, and bless him by praying to God for that, and then I'm going to send it to him, and I'll play it back to you from my uh, sent mailbox. Jesus, we just praise you for Andy Koo, for his uh, thoughtfulness and for the time he shared with us. I pray, Lord, that you would bless the fruit that he has planted here and the fellowship that he has made among us. In Jesus' name, amen. Boom. Uh, send it through my Gmail account here to Andy. The prayer is sent. And if I go to my Gmail sent box, we can hope that connectivity here is good enough. This is the only problem is that sometimes it takes a second. Here's here's the prayer. So you got to hear the prayer for Andy. Thanks. What's new this weekend? Actually, well, ironically, everything that we built is new this weekend. We've been thinking about prayer for months, and uh, every piece of code was new, but I would not want to qualify since we're new because we've been working on this for a long time. Uh, requires having an email address, or are there other ways to find and target? We'll do all these in the future. I think um, SMS would be really interesting to pull up on your phone. Um, you could distribute it just directly through Facebook messages and those types of things. But for email was the first thing that we built out because it was easy. Yeah. Other questions? To explain the rash of phone calls I got after I sat down at the table today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, I am D. Bible. And likewise, you guys are up next, so likewise, uh, get plugged in. I was excited that uh, apparently over the last 15 minutes, uh, 0.2 billion more Christians worldwide uh, were, were came to Christ because we went from 1.8 in the presentation a couple minutes ago to 2 billion. It's <laughs> exciting. God's already answering those prayers. <laughs> Alright, so my name is Korean Vedkuri and I've got some good news for you guys. There are more than five prices available today. So whoever answers the following question is going to get the sixth. It's a $50 discount from Logos, thank you very much, on their software. So we don't have much time, so here it goes. Who was Noah's grandfather, and what's he famous for? 
Come on, Methuselah. 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 What's he famous for? Being the oldest person in the Bible. How old? 969. Brilliant job. Let's give you one more chance. Another $50, a total of $100. Thank you again. Uh, <laughs> who was Methuselah's dad and what's he famous for? Enoch. Huh? Who said that? Nice. And what's he famous for? Being translated because he was with God. Ooh, tech stuff, but nice. So, yeah, that's right. So Enoch walked close with the Lord so much that the God just decided to take him away. And as, as a team, we decided that it's something that we want to do. We want to help Christians walk closer with the Lord so by reading and knowing the Bible better. But to be honest, sometimes it's not that easy because we come across portions like genealogy, which is very long, or Leviticus laws, which are really complicated. But um, this weekend, a group of amazing engineers from the East Coast and the West, there are about eight guys all over here, they decided to work on a project which is like an IMDB for the Bible, or better known as IMD Bible, or really known as I Am the Bible. <laughs> we believe that the Bible does not have to remain as a text source of information, but can be really transformed into a real life visualization. Let me explain. So we go to our screen, and we can start with with Adam. Just one. Can you change the screen size? coordinates, we can see his LinkedIn profile, and the blocks that he's referenced on. <laughs> and moving forward, after another eight generations, we can click on any one of them to know more about them. We finally come to Noah, whom God chose to press the reset button. And after mankind was reset entirely, it was another ten generations before the patriarchs came. And then we can learn more about how these men of God became the father of our faith and the father of our nation. So we can get to know more for the next 50 generations before Jesus Christ, the son of David, was born. And talking about David, we can go back to know more about the shepherd, the shepherd boy who became king. So it was really the king of kings who held his world together with all these facets around him and these people that he really came to in the world to save. And we really wanted to take a minute to explain why these people are so important and what the Bible is really trying to tell us through these stories of these people. And it's just a transformation of these people that the Bible it really is. And we wanted to explain that better. Because we believe that the Bible is BEA beautiful, and we wanted to make sure that the beauty really shines for itself. Often I agree that it's sometimes it's hard, we get stuck on some pages, but we wanted to innovate so that we can simplify the greatest story ever told in a way that we can remember and act on it. I am the Bible is not just going to be on the cloud, but it's just less than 4 MB in size. So you can carry it around in your pocket on your way to work, or maybe when you're holidaying in the Caribbean, or even if you're on a mission trip to Nepal. So next time when you want to talk to kids about the journey from Egypt to Canaan, or want to reflect about the day of crucifixion, you can just remember how IMDB we can simplify, we can clarify the context and simplify the content. Our, our entire endeavor was powered by Logos Biblia API, which we used to which we used to uh, search for the Bible, and we also created some natural language processing um, algorithms, um, which which help us to crunch the metadata. Um, we also used 
some, some in our industry we enhance it, we create a 3D social graph using the JSON database, but we'll just skip to it, it's going to be safe. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> but we really want to focus on the user experience. We want it to make it a simple one page. You never need to reload. It's fast. You can set, go through it quickly, backtrack. But importantly, you can focus on the subject that you really want to dive in. And because our vision is really to help the Bible be translated into different regions in a beautiful and visually explained manner. So that missions can take the Gospels to the ends of the earth and the unreached people. The next time you're stuck in a page or a passage on the Bible, don't skip by. Don't give up. Just remember, I am the Bible. Thank you very much. God bless. This is uh, all new code. 24 hour code. Yeah. yeah. Just curious, what were some of the hardest problems that you had tackled? Uh, the hardest problem was uh, the idea was to create uh, uh, an NLP framework that would store the entire Bible text in memory, uh, convert it into multiple data structures, and we the you saw um, one possible visualization and you got a preview of the other 3D visualization. What we're doing is generating data, metadata on the Bible from the Bible text. And I um, basically, um, using NLP, you can discover relationships from the Bible, like, for example, this genealogy, we just pulled it straight out of Luke. And I mean, um, this creating the system was the hardest part. And after that, you can expound upon this by adding rules. And you can, um, it'll, you can plug in any Bible text and um, all you have to do is program in the, the language root, the grammar rules for a particular language, and it'll, um, it'll, 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 it'll work. That's great. And all you guys worked together before? Uh, no. Uh, there was eight of us. Um, I, I, I thought about this. I've been thinking about doing this project for over a year, but I just never had time, and this was a great opportunity to work on it. Likewise, after Likewise, City Impact volunteer app. So City Impact, get ready and queued up. And we'll get Likewise connected and ready to go. Who's doing the uh, verbal on this? about us too much, but we were just a bunch of hackers and here in the valley and we thought that Kofi Kingdom was a great opportunity to get together and just build something. Now on the way up here we had an idea. We, we, came, we came together with an idea and said, you know what, let's just go hack on this. But Friday night when you guys started talking about all these different challenges, these real world challenges, we were challenged to think bigger, 10x, what can we do really in this weekend? And so we decided to narrow down and focus on mentorship. So as of Saturday morning, We've been working on this, heads down, a lot of coffee, and uh, a lot of bathroom breaks. But um, anyhow, so, so, so this is uh, likewise. And the problem we're tackling, like I said, is mentorship. Now the problem initially with mentorship is that the term mentorship is heavy. Right? When we hear mentorship, it's like, oh my gosh, like, I have to answer this guy's all his questions, his life problems. It's a really heavy term. And so we want to make mentorship more accessible. We want to make sure that mentees can find mentors easily, and that mentors are not overwhelmed. Um, I heard Andy Stanley once say this at this one sermon about, he, he illustrated this perfectly. He says that all of us in here have the ability to pour into other people's lives. Everyone in here knows something more than somebody else does. It. And our responsibility is not to answer all the questions for that individual. Our responsibility is to empty our cup of knowledge into theirs and keep it moving. So that's what, that's what, that's what we're doing with Likewise. Now before we go into the demo, I'll just talk about some um, some end stuff. We have a, an Android app, an iOS app. Um, 
is, is talking to a database of Node.js uh, and is pulling in user data, images, and uh, tags, and of course with Facebook integration. So why don't we get started? So here the user comes in, and we're going to walk them through a uh, a tour of what what likewise is. So you can keep sliding through this. It's micro mentorship. Just focus on your strengths as a mentor, mentee, and it's tied to communities. We we feel that this is only going to work with with communities, being church organizations or companies. Move forward. So let's go ahead and sign up with Facebook. Sign with Facebook. Now we want to take this onboarding process simple. In order for you to be part of this ecosystem, you have to be willing to contribute as a mentor. So it's not only mentees trying to get all this knowledge. You're coming into the system is a two-way street. So we're going to collect three three data points. So these are data points that this user is comfortable in sharing it. It's like I know design, I know prayer, I know spiritual growth. I'm going to share in these areas. And now this is the community part. Your, your church launches this into initiative. You have 5,000 members, you're saying, listen, I want you guys to network and do knowledge sharing. And so we, we provide a, a code for, for this community, you join this community, and now you're inside the app. Now this is your home screen on this app. It's, it's really targeted for search. We want you to search for the advice that you're looking for. You see the activity that's happening within your church, people are adding new interests, new skills, and finding matches. Why don't we go ahead and search, since this is our primary um, seller point. Why don't you search for design? Me being a designer, I'm going to search, and you can see real time, it starts filtering your community with, with the like-minded people, right? Likewise. You're going to find people that want to share on this particular topic. Why don't we revert back? Let's delete this. Now let's go into something real heavy. So I'm, I'm looking to, to adopt a child. So I'm seeing in my community of 5,000 people, who's been there, who's done that, who has experience, and who's in the system that wants to leverage that. So we're going to go here and click on, on the user and say, okay, this person's in the system, she's willing to talk about adoption and I want to wise up with her. So I'll send this request, she gets notified in, in her iOS app or Android app, and then from there we take out of app experiences and really have community around this particular topic that either she's passionate about and I want to learn more about. And that's, and, and that's likewise. Likewise, and, and we're, we're thinking about next, this is MVP, this is as of Saturday, 32 hours in. Um, we're really excited about it. We, we really strongly believe that mentorship is something that everyone should be a part of. Um, and so we're thinking about engagement. How do we drive engagement? How can we use this app for tracking your history? What if likewise was your app that you have that, that actually helps you cultivate these healthy mentor mentee relationships? It sends you reminders, it keeps track of your history and your action items in that relationship. And so that's likewise, it's really knowledge transfer on a specific interest in a tight knit community. Thank you. By the way, we just set up a launch thing, so if you guys want to sign up for more info, feel free. Questions? Which, which theme is this? Oh, okay, so this is um, community. It's healthier communities and ministries. Okay. We saw some other themes, but I think that strongly identifies us. Okay. You had mentioned ranking expertise, like or... <laughs> yeah, so we have some, some ideas about that. How, how do you know that this person is legitimate? And, and well, one thing is you're part of the same community. So that automatically we're bonded in that way. But in terms of you being an expert in design, we're going to implement this. It's almost like a leader rank. So as soon as I finish having a mentor mentee relationship, I get reminded by the app to go and give you kudos or reviews. Before that dribble score or dribble badges or something? We can do that. <laughs> if this was a, a design community, we could definitely do that. Any questions? All right, let's give him a hand. Thank you. Thank you. All right, well, uh, City Impact is getting hooked up. If any of you want to talk to me about healthy eating, just come see me over there at the table. I'll be glad to help you mentor up on that one. So. All right, uh, Bam. Bam is on deck. Take it away. Yeah. So my name is Adam. Um, I work for uh, a, a startup in the Mission District here, uh, and we what we do is, is uh, event apps for companies that are doing like big corporate events and, um, and trade shows and stuff that typically can pay thousands of dollars for an app. But uh, my wife and I also uh, we volunteer at uh, City Impacts with their adoptive building program, and one of the, the needs that they really have is um, so just to give you some background on what adoptive building is, um, we have people going into 
uh, dozen plus buildings uh, in the Tenderloin District, uh, low income housing, uh, really getting to know uh, the residents there, uh, share the gospel with people there, and ultimately to disciple people and start churches and new buildings. Uh, but one of the, the issues we have is knocking on maybe 50 doors uh, in the course of a, of a Sunday afternoon um, and trying to, to build those relationships. Sometimes it, it's, it's a struggle just to remember sometimes names or people's prayer requests from week to week uh, and just keep track of that with you know, pencil and paper. They, they have a CRM app that, that um, is just web-based, web but uh, it's, uh, they're having trouble getting people to use it because you know, you're transferring notes from paper to, to the web later on. Um, so uh, this week I had a conversation with, with my manager and said, hey, you know, City Impact can't afford to, to buy an app, but could we use our technology um, and platform to, and, uh, as long as I spend the time to customize it, um, for City Impact, we we do that for free for them. And they said, go for it. So um, I uh, I had some some trouble getting screencast working for Android, but so I just took a video about an, an hour ago. So I'll just walk you through it here. Um, okay. So here here's the app. So it comes up, and uh, the first thing it comes up on is an activity feed of uh, different volunteer activities. So you can get a global feed, you can see what other volunteers are, are, are doing, who they're talking to. Um, there's also an, an ability to have what we call promoted posts for, um, for the volunteer coordinators to send out information to all the volunteers as they're out in the field. Um, there's ability to kind of connect with other volunteers. So I'm the only volunteer in here so far, but you can go into that volunteer, you can um, see you know, who they've been talking to, uh, you can follow them so that um, maybe I'm not volunteering one week, but my teammate Mike is, and um, you know I can go go and follow his activity, be praying for people he's praying for and talking to. Um, for people who are new to the app, we got we have uh, an information set, section about what City Impact is, its vision, video about uh, Francis Chan talking about it. Um, but then the way we really plan to use this on a daily basis is. Uh, is this adoptability micro app where you go in and uh, my wife and I, we go to the Drake Hotel uh, every week and we go and they were gonna knock on uh, Hannah and Tony's door in room 403. And um, so right before I go and knock on the door, I can just say, hey, okay, what, what, what have I talked about uh, with them? And it says, pray with Hannah about finding a job. So I can knock on the door and say, hey, uh, good to see you again, Hannah. Um, how is your job search coming? You know, how can we pray for you this week? Um, and then add a quick note about what we prayed for, um, what any kind of needs, physical needs that we can meet, uh, that maybe even other volunteers can, can meet in the future, come back throughout the week. Um, post that update, and that goes into, it goes back into the, into the feed for uh, other volunteers to see and for my, my, own, uh, my own information to remind me in the future. Um, so that's basically the app. Uh, Disclosure is most of this code is is not not new. I just spent the the, um, the weekend kind of customizing it for for City Impact. So I just wanted to show this as a way of um, you know th think about where where you are in what kind of um, uh, places has God placed you in, and you know what kind of influence has He given you. I don't think of myself as having a lot of influence, but you know just been doing my job with Double Dutch and. Um, they see that I'm working, working hard, and um, they saw fit to uh, let me do this. So. Right. Do I have any questions? Yeah. Does this app translate to other organizations, or is it specific to City Impact? So, technologically, it could adapt to other organizations. Um, when I talked to my manager about this, he said, you know, it's kind of a, a silver silk. We, we, like, can't just be letting all these organizations just have these these free apps. Um, so you know, it, it was mostly just because of of our relationship with the company, and that's just something that we uh, are actively involved in volunteering for. That they you know, uh, decided to do this for us, but technologically. Right. So the thing that you created is specifically for. Right. So it shows up in, in the Android and iOS app store and everything. Um, so. uh, what's important? Sharing the information or keeping it private? Um, what's important is sharing the information with the, the other volunteers who need it. So um, I have it set up as a closed registration system, so only only volunteers that um, are set up by an admin 
uh, a volunteer coordinator at City Impact can, can input. So um, you know, these are people that are they're consistently going out and, and knocking on people's doors in, uh, in the tender line that can see, you know, can see these, these requests. Do the volunteers encourage each other? Oh yeah, so um, you could, um, when, when somebody checks into a particular room in, in person saying, you know, I'm praying for this person for this, um, like if I'm following your activity, um, I can, you know, put, just post a like there or post a comment and they'll get an update um, on their phone. Any other questions? Good. All right. Thank you very much. FAM team, and then the uh, 4K mapping project is next. Human trafficking is a global epidemic that currently enslaves over 2 million children on a global scale. By the end of this presentation, 10 of those 10 more children will become a statistic. Much like our field research, or, or, um, so when we started this, we originally started with an app that would help the police by allowing citizens who have been trained in human trafficking as an issue and know what to look for and allow them to go out and send reports to the police to you know, go ahead and get help them be able to <coughs> take care of the situation. Unfortunately, what we quickly discovered through our research with the Polaris Project and IJM is that police officers aren't necessarily always trained in human trafficking as an issue. And consequently, because of that, could end up hindering rather than helping. So consequently, we ended up going back to the drawing board. We explored some further issues, including case studies um, or case management, and then eventually found found out through our help with IJM that um, our field experts here who go out into the field every day and they're working with the people, they're on the ground, they're risking their lives in order to find brothels, rice mills, and other situations where trafficking is happening. And we discovered that they really didn't have a good way to get the information to IJM or any similar organization. That currently all they can do is just record their insights and then somehow, eventually, maybe when they go to the office, just send it in. That doesn't necessarily work in critical situations where people's lives are at risk. So what we did is we really sat down and we explored this issue further. And we would like to introduce FAM, or Free As Me. We're coming from the idea that our family, our fellow brothers and sisters, should be as free as every single one of you in this room. So our features and functionality is that this app can not only take photos record, and record the GPS, but it can also record audio, much like the field experts do today. And then, because a lot of them don't necessarily have a signal um, you know, when they're out in the field, because they can be in very remote regions, as soon as they have a signal, it uploads automatically, much like Evernote or similar apps. So that allows the field offices to go ahead and respond immediately in order and empowers them to really take care of this problem. So without further delay, we would like to demo our app.
Next, we would like to show you what the data actually looks like and how the field offices would actually have access to the data. We use PARS for our backend, and as you can see, we were able to import quite a bit of information. Uh, the GPS, latitude and longitude, uh, the agent's name, Zephyrus, location, office, uh, various audio, audio recordings associated with each tape. We also have uh, two photos and uh, titles for each of the visits. Um, let's take a look at one of the photos. A sample photo here. And then uh, we can also review the audio recording. I can see that the police officer is already here. And so now I would love to thank our amazing team that made this all happen. Our subject matter expert, Sapriz from IJM, Maline, and my designer, and Jonathan and Susanna, our development team, and Marish, who did our presentation. And Steve. Did I not say Steve? Anyway, sorry. Um, <laughs> so, uh, do you have any questions? New code, right? Yes, absolutely. It started, we started coding about noon yesterday. Any how, further questions? How, um, uh, have you thought about how you might, say, aggregate the data uh, on ways that you can report to you know, lots of people in the field? Um, so it's, it's all uploaded to the, the same database. And it also has a full REST API for in case you want to have different aggregation apps or, or web interfaces for different people to use. Or even data visuals. Data visualization as well. Other questions? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Thank you, everyone. All right, well, we're getting the uh, 4K mapping project uh, hooked up. Just want to make sure that uh, we didn't miss a team. Uh, we you know, went around and got everyone that we, the, that we had, but if there's a team here that we missed with a presentation ready, uh, please let us know that now so we can be sure and get you plugged in. Otherwise, uh, this is our last presentation.
<laughs> so if some of you could work on uh, technology that would figure out, uh, you know, computer monitor stuff after all these years, with the better projector that was uh, was talked about from day one. Apparently, the projector laptop interface hasn't been improved a lot. All right. Um, my name is John, and actually, uh, I'm representing somebody who can't be here, Jill Thornton. Uh, from 4K Mapping, she had to leave last night, and so um, I guess first let me just thank uh, Jill uh, for uh, bringing this project to our attention, but then also uh, Chad Meyer, Jonathan Dietz, uh, Kelly Fine, and Tracy Maslin, who basically made all of this happen. Um, so Jill has a problem. Uh, she works for 4K Mapping, and they have a product. Uh, their product is Omega Zones, and you probably don't know what Omega Zones is. And part of the reason why you don't know what Omega Zones is is because they don't have a way to, to get that framework to you. And when I say framework, uh, they have divided the world into uh, something that makes sense. Um, it's something that they're hoping will, uh, I guess, make the kingdom task uh, of completing the Great Commission more manageable. Um, if you think about a global map, uh, basically you've got countries which, uh, if you're mapping your data, really don't provide enough detail, but if you go down to the city level, uh, it might be too much, it might be overwhelming. Um, so Omega Zones, uh, they aggregate details without losing them, uh, they're created using country populations from the UN, uh, and they're divided by, uh, by existing geopolitical divisions, um, so the boundaries and shapes are not random or unfamiliar. So you might have a world map, and then when you scroll into, uh, zoom into Brazil, uh, you can actually start to see the formation of some of those omega zones, but uh, they have information uh, that uh, is broken down by all of these different countries. Um, and then as you zoom in even further and select say Rio de Janeiro, it also, uh, the data uh, correspondingly uh, changes. Um, so what, what did they do? Uh, well, they, they created an API. And so um, an API isn't necessarily sexy or, uh, or great visual, but uh, hey, let's give it a shot. So uh, you can go ahead and <laughs> pull some of these, these regions, and then if you want, uh, you can, or if uh, go down to the country level, go down to the smaller territories, maybe a, a, a region, um, and then even down into a city. And they've mapped three million cities uh, that have been geocoded into the system as well. Um, that's great. What are the implications for this? Well, my name is John, and I have a problem. <laughs> I work for One Hope. And one hope has 26 years worth of data. Um, next year we'll have reached one billion uh, billion children and youth uniquely with God's word. I'd like to see that on a map. Um, but I'm not a cartographer. Um, I just want to make good decisions. I want to be the best steward of I can as I can with the resources that God has provided for uh, for our ministry. And so. I know that by every dollar that I save, three more children around the world are going to hear God's word. So this is really important to me. Um, and so we're going through the, actually the exercise of uh, tagging all of our, our data. Um, and, and what this does for me is this changes, I have a problem to we have a solution. Um, and I think the beautiful part about what 4K mapping has done is it's, a, it's an open framework that is going to be available to everybody through this API. And so if we're starting to use a common framework, then my data will overlay with your data. And then we can start to see correlations between, hey, now I know where you're doing your work. And now not only can I make better decisions financially and be a better steward of the, God, of the resources that God has entrusted to me, but we can work together, we can partner together, and we can make better decisions as a kingdom body and decide where those resources might better be used. And so, really, that's 4K mapping and the API that they created yesterday. Are there any questions?
please no. <laughs> all right, thanks, Joe. All right, and thanks to all of our teams for your work and your presentations. And uh, at this moment, our judges are going to adjourn back to the secret room, the holy of uh, technological holies, <laughs> and deliberate on their decision. So uh, grab some sandwiches, bags of chips. Uh, we have some music for your uh, listening enjoyment. Take a break, grab a drink, whatever you need to do. And in just a few moments, our judges will return. <laughs>
Uh, and I have to say, I was inspired by all the passion you know, behind all the projects you guys are working on. And to see the finished products here today, you know, it's just fantastic. But us at Key, you know, we want to extend this offer to you guys. Anybody down the road, uh, if you want to use our services, we want to extend some free service to you guys for being a part of the Leadership Network ha Hackathon this weekend. So at any time down the road, uh, contact myself or contact anybody at Key and just mention this hackathon and we'll hook you guys up with some free stuff. So, you know, thanks again for having me and hope to see you all in, in Raleigh. All right, I want to uh, invite uh, one of our organizers, uh, Josh Kwan, to come up and talk a little bit about Carpenters and uh, whatever else is on his mind. Hi, everyone. I'm Josh. Um, thanks again for coming. I know that some of you have come from Minneapolis, from, from Dallas, from Oregon, from Hong Kong. We had the guy come from Hong Kong. Uh, just to, just want to say thanks for uh, giving us, over this weekend, your five, your five loaves and two fish. Um, and, and uh, to invest your time and talent to creating some really amazing products out there, some some killer ideas. Um, I think this is just sort of a sampling of what of what God has invested in you, and what God has um, has placed on your hearts, and what could be flourishing if we uh, invested time and, and uh, efforts to doing it. So uh, at Carpenters, I, I'm here representing Neil Alston. Um, we're and our team of folks at Carpenters. We're 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 just passionate about. Um, building a community of Christians, developers, designers, entrepreneurs, who want to build technology that draws people closer to God. It's helping people practice the ancient virtues, spiritual disciplines, things like prayer and Sabbath and, and uh, tithing and uh, forgiveness and justice. How do we help people do that through technology? We're also passionate about building a community here and, and across the country of Christians you don't have to be working on a specific thing right now, but who are other believers out there who are gifted in this particular area? And we want to create a network of people who can find each other and identify each other, work with each other, okay? So we've had two events in, in Silicon Valley, one in, in, the, in the peninsula and the other one in San Francisco. This is our third one, the first hackathon. We'll continue building this community, so we want you to be a part of it if you're interested. Uh, we'll reach out to you in the, in the weeks ahead. Um, and I also want to point out that uh, Jerry Shen here has got a, a conference on August 5th, is that right? LEO, um, for entrepreneurs and leaders uh, in technology and, and just basically about entrepreneurship and leadership. Um, so if you're interested in that and getting to know some other people, uh, go see Jerry. Um, all right, so thank you so much for on behalf of Carpenters and uh, the other sponsors, uh, our organizers. Uh, just a pleasure to be here with all of you, thanks. before we get to the prizes, then we'll have some other stuff at the end, but uh, one last thing, uh, for those of you teams who uh, win a prize, uh, after you come up and accept that and have your picture made, uh, then if you would, once we're finished, at the end, uh, once we're finished with everything, head to the back to that conference room and we've got some, uh, you know, financial legal stuff we gotta get signed so that you guys can get your prize disbursement. So, if you don't show up for that, you don't get any money. So after we're done, be sure and don't leave before you head back to the back. So um, enough announcements. Let's get on to the prizes. And the first one is actually a special prize by uh, Logos or Logos, depending on uh, you know who you are. And so we've uh, asked them to come up and make that presentation. Jim with Logos Bible Software, which was a fantastic event. Really, really uh, appreciate Leadership Network for putting it on. Um, some of the teams did more in a weekend here than we could sometimes do in a week. Really impressed with some of the stuff that was kicked out and, and all the passion that was put into it. Um, I have in my hand here five copies of Logos Bible Software Platinum Edition. This is over $2,000 worth of uh, books, a large digital library, plus all of our powerful tools. And uh, it's my great pleasure to award it to IMD Bible. Uh, you guys did a fantastic job. Um, want to put this software in your hands so you can keep doing some amazing work. Also want to invite you guys to reach out to me to come up for an interview. I need tour of the <laughs> Bellingham uh, office. Uh, we should talk more. Um, so don't have much come on up and... Uh... <laughs> uh, and uh, welcome to 
actually and I are going to be Jeff to get on a plane here in a second. If anyone would like to follow up with us uh, about anything regarding the event or, or, or Logos, Jim at Logos.com, Bob at Logos.com. Thanks. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Jim. All right. The first of, of the other, I don't want to say it's an, it is an unofficial prize, but of, of the official prizes uh, goes to the best social justice solution uh, that is sponsored by Key. And so uh, Dave and Chris are going to come up and make that presentation. Yeah, need, uh, yeah, need, uh, yeah, great. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So the winner for the best social justice is free as me. Bam. <laughs> Initiative, and so uh, Dave and Rabs, if Rabs would come up, and you guys are still here, awesome. No, they have to catch a, a train, like in ten minutes or something. So. I'm glad you called me because otherwise I was walking out the door. Uh, the, the winner for best spiritual formation, abide. Thank you. 
One quick question. Uh, I was just informed there was a, uh, an invite in the group to uh, a barbecue. It's, uh, who posted that? Did somebody, is, was there a, he's not here? So, so is that, there's a, Tuesday. All right, so those of you that are local, check the community. There's a, a, an invite. Uh, if we had uh, the app that could let us look up food and, and lunch, uh, you know, or barbecue, we could find that. Uh, but anyway, uh, you, there's an invite out there. I haven't seen it, so that's all I can get. Check the community on that. Uh, we want to thank all of you, again, for the work that you've done this weekend. I would ask that every team, uh, if you would do us a favor before you go or, or after you go, but uh, designate someone to uh, send us an email with all of the team members. We want to make sure that we have a record of all the teams and who participated on each one of the teams. And so if you would do that, if you would send me uh, a list, you can do it through the G Plus community if you want to. Uh, you can send it directly to my email, tim.nations at leadnet.org. Uh, however, if you would, though, please send me that list so that we can have that. Uh, that would be super helpful. Uh, but once again, the, the work that you've done this weekend has been, it's been impressive. Uh, and we believe, again, it's just the beginning of how God can use what has been done here to have a tremendous impact in the weeks and months ahead. And so we look forward to seeing what you do and also what God does through you and through this initiative as we plan for future events. As we mentioned, uh, September 13th through 15th, we're planning Raleigh. We'll have more information about that in our community. And so please uh, be looking forward to that. Love to have you guys out. In fact, we've got two guys. You guys go ahead and stand up. You guys that came here from Raleigh, from Hope Community Church. And we have one of our partners on the ground there. We're excited to have them come and do some learning as well as some hacking and relationship building, all kinds of stuff while they're here. Uh, but we're looking forward to that next event. Uh, organizers, anything else we need to cover or mention before we pray out of here? Am I missing anything? Chris? Anything? We're good? All right. So uh, for those of you that, just a reminder, those of you teams that won, uh, don't leave before you visit us in the back room and we've got uh, some paperwork and things filled out for you. So let's uh, have a prayer and be sent forth from here. Father, we again are just grateful for uh, you and for who you are and for the love that you have for us and the fact that you have called us to be your hands and feet, to be your mouthpieces for the gospel and for the kingdom. And so, Father, we believe that this is just the beginning. And the work that you've done through these talented individuals and teams is uh, just a taste of what will be done in the weeks and months ahead. And so we ask that through your spirit uh, that you would continue to work through these teams and the teams that will come together in the future to develop very dynamic, very powerful tools so that individuals and churches and communities uh, can prosper because of your goodness and because of Jesus Christ. And so, Father, uh, we ask you to send us forth from this place to continue to have an impact individually and as a group. And, uh, Father, may you be lifted high and glorified in what comes from all of this. We pray this in Jesus' name, and we all said, Amen. God bless you.